Hi there, boys and girls. How are you doing today? Today, uh, I, you know, I, I was thinking, was thinking it would be appropriate for me to finally go ahead and uh, uh, talk about the Xbox and the PlayStation and question what the fuck they're up to. As many of you are aware, uh, Microsoft and Sony are doing these sort of like mid-generation console refreshes and it's it's kind of fucking bizarre you know we've had uh, different iterations on uh, consoles during their generations in the past like uh, PS3 Slim uh, Xbox 360 Slim that kind of stuff and we already had that happen this generation there's a PS4 Slim I believe and an Xbox One S. But now, uh, PlayStation's releasing, well, PlayStation has already released the PS4 Pro, and Microsoft is due later this year to release the Xbox Scorpio, which has yet to have an official big grand unveiling. So what the fuck is going on with that? I, I, I sort of see the reasoning behind it, and yet at the same time, I don't. When the PS4 and Xbox One initially launched, uh, they were already pretty underpowered compared to uh, PC at the time. So, you know, of course, naturally, as time goes on, uh, their, their hardware was considerably weaker and weaker as th we moved forward. So Sony was first out the gate with the PS4 Pro. Uh, that allowed for uh, 4K sort of gaming. I don't think that it can... Uh, uh, do it natively, I believe it upscales, and also allowing for the ability to use the PlayStation VR headset. I don't really know how well that's doing for them. I, I tried to look up any information about uh, what sales are like for the PS4 Pro right now. I know that the PSVR apparently is doing pretty well, so I would assume that the PS4 Pro is doing all right. I don't know, it's not really that big of a leap above the uh, the PlayStation 4, or the PlayStation 4's base model, that is. And games are still required to work on both the base PS4 and the PS4 Pro, so, I mean, it's not really that big of a deal. But then, then we get over to Microsoft here, and I'm a little bit confused about what's going on w with the Scorpio. Microsoft is touting this console to be the most powerful console ever to date. Phil Spencer has gone on record of saying that it could essentially be a next generation console. I don't know, that, that boggles my mind. Because here's the thing, games have to run on both the base Xbox One and the Xbox Scorpio as well. So, the Xbox Scorpio is going to be held back in that regard. If games are required to run on the base Xbox One, which is significantly less powerful than the Xbox Scorpio, uh, developers are not going to want to put in that extra work to make sure that those games are looking gorgeous and crisp and uh, next-gen on the Xbox Scorpio. That being said, I don't doubt that at some point Microsoft is going to uh, change their thinking as far as that goes on the Xbox Scorpio. I have a feeling we'll probably start to see Xbox Scorpio exclusive games at some point or another. Maybe not for the first, like, year or two of its life, but yeah. It's just a really strange time in this current console generation. I, I, I don't really know what to think of it. Games analysts are coming out now and saying that Sony may release the PlayStation 5 as early as next year to compete with the Xbox Scorpio, which... Uh, that would blow my mind too, because they currently have over like 50 million people, uh, a 50 million player install base on their PlayStation 4. That would be a very big middle finger to everybody who owns one of these things, and to everybody who's bought one within the last, you know, year or two? Because that's another thing. There's no way that these consoles can be cheap, especially Xbox Scorpio. If this thing is going to be the most powerful console running native 4K gaming, I, I can't imagine that that shit is going to be below $500. 500 or 600 is what I would have to guess. Which, I mean, I, I don't know, I guess to be fair, the Xbox One launched at $500, but I mean, well, I mean, you, you see how well they're doing. Uh, Microsoft and Sony are kind of just playing a game of like uh, telephone right now. They they keep on answering each other with more powerful hardware, but uh, that's that's not what the consumers are interested in. I would imagine that the average gamer is more interested in the games rather than the specs 
of their console of choice. And you know, Microsoft having some games on that Xbox Scorpio is really going to be what you need to get any kind of revenue off of that thing. I mean, we see how well that you're faring against PlayStation right now. It's, eh, you're not doing so hot. You don't, you don't really have those exclusives, those must-have exclusives that, uh, you know, draw people to your console like Sony does. And Nintendo, but I mean, you know. Yeah, they're not really involved in this. They're kind of doing their own shit. You know, I, I said it earlier, and I'll say it again. I am i don't understand what the point in these mid-generation consoles are. If you wanted to make any kind of leap forward in hardware and specs, uh, you might as well have just gone the, the extra mile and made them next-generation consoles. Either that, or just leave it sit for a couple years yet, until the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One are really kinda pushing their limits, you know? I don't really see much issue with them at this point in time, it's... I don't know. At the very least, it's it's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting to see how these, uh, you know, these two consoles fare on the market. Are they going to sell? Are consumers just not really going to care about them? What's gonna happen if they flop? Who knows? Time will tell. Uh, Scorpio will likely be revealed here at E3, so yeah, we'll get a look at that for the first time, and yeah. yeah. Follow me on Twitter, at The Uncle Al Show, and of course, subscribe and like if you liked this video. And I guess I'll see you guys next time. In the meantime, this is your old pal Uncle Al, signing out.